Welcome back, everybody, to the H3 Podcast Live every Friday and Tuesday, except when it's not Friday or Tuesday, which does happen occasionally, at twitch.tv forward slash H3H3 Productions. Today, we have got an absolute slammer of an episode. Before I get into that, I just want to say congratulations, Hila. Congratulations. Because we, <laughs> as a matter of law, just slam dunked Matt Lost Zone. <laughs> So first of all, I just want to give you a high five. I mean, the battle, the battle is over, but the war is not quite over yet. Yeah, not quite over, but the big battle is over. That's the big battle, yeah. And from here on, whatever happens, we'll be okay. I think so, yeah. But anyway, we'll get into all that in a moment. But first, I want to thank our sponsors, who are Quip, Audible, and Casper, which I will love to talk about more later. But until then, let's talk about this lawsuit that we've just won. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> so we were basically yesterday morning. I mean, mm-hmm. the verdict came in through the judge. Yeah. I was sleeping. I think it was like 9 a.m. And Ela wakes me up and she says, we won. Yeah. And I've, I've had like dreams of this day. To get that text from the lawyer <coughs> saying we won. Yeah, I find I've, or we lost. I don't know, but <laughs> it, it's weird when it finally happens. Something you like think about so much. Seriously, I fantasized about how we would get that message. What yeah. time of day would it be? <laughs> it's kind of nice in a way that it just happened because I didn't have any time to think about it. Yeah. it was just like, oh, we won. <laughs> I didn't even know how to handle that. It's like what? I know. <laughs> I was like, I, I didn't feel any emotions. I was just like, what? But slowly over the course of the day, it was like, yeah. Ayy. We immediately started working on a video explaining everything. <laughs> and then we posted it in the evening. And I think only once we posted it, I started to, to, to understand that it's real. Right. And to celebrate. Yeah, I feel the same way. Because it was, I don't know, just the fact of, like, getting out there and talking about it to our fans mm-hmm. and getting that off your chest. It's like, damn. <laughs> so it's not quite the end. Well, by the way, I just want to say the support and love we got was yeah. absolutely bananas. This, twi- this tweet I, I put out that morning, we won the lawsuit. Here, let me put it over here. Look at this. We won the lawsuit. Video coming soon. Huge victory for fair use on YouTube. 283,000 oh likes. Whoa. That is so crazy. <laughs> that is so much. That's like a lifetime achievement award, kind of. <laughs> um, is there going to be your pinned tweet forever? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't, li- I don't necessarily like when people keep pinned tweets from like yeah. over like a month ago. Sometimes people have pinned tweets from like an out from like a year ago, and it's like, well, dude, co- let's move on. <laughs> Let's talk about some new shit. So I think probably for like a week. <laughs> but man, oh man, that was so cool. And on Reddit, basically the f- top three posts of Reddit with like 60,000 plus votes was the video and the announcement. Yeah. It was great, man. It felt good. It felt good to get all of that support and love. Um, it's really nice, man. It feels good. It, because we we worked and we battled. Behind the scenes, oh my God. so hard and long on this, and it's nice to share the victory with with so many people. It's really hard to explain the process. It was such a nightmare, so long. Look, looking over all these like lawyer documents, and each motion is like thirty pages <coughs> long, and it was a lot. I forgot to say what we're actually doing today. In this episode, because it's actually pretty great. I completely didn't talk about it. So today we're going to talk about a couple things. And after the break, we have Skippy, the (laughs) 37-year-old virgin now. He was 34 when we made a video about when he made that video. And we have Ryan Johnsimus. They're calling in together. Basically, I want to know what Ryan Johnsimus, you guys know, the the ultimate pickup artist, the fuck machine. (laughs) The professional soaper that we made a video about. Yeah, he's a god. So he's going to basically get in Skippy's brain and give him some some advice. How are we going to get Skippy's dick wet? How are we going to get... <laughs> I want Skippy's dick in that mason well, jar. Well, first of he's got to find that. the one, you know. That's what I'm curious. Is he looking for the one or is he just looking for the one hole to get his dick wet? <laughs> he's got to find the one well, because he's got to marry first. Well, his clock is ticking. So 37 <laughs> years old, let's just start by putting your dick in a hole. 
<laughs> you know, any hole. Pulse optional. <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, species optional. I don't know about that. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it. We'll see how desperate it is. But anyway, I just wanted to make that clear that that is what we're doing today. And that'll come up soon. So I'm excited for that conversation. Um, yeah, back to the lawsuit. The um, <clears throat> it's it, You guys can't believe how many documents, how slow moving the legal system is. And on one hand, I understand why it's that way because it's so important to be thorough, to give yeah. both sides the amount of time they need for discovery, for research, for writing really beautiful, eloquent yeah. arguments. It's, it's so serious. But Everything it's, is... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a double sword. Shit. Yeah. Because on the other hand, people who are qualified to do that kind of work charge. Like one, our highest rate attorney was like six fifty an hour. An hour. That yeah. means that he charged you essentially six thousand dollars for one day's full of work, which happened to us when we had the <coughs> depositions. Yeah, that that was like a ten-hour day. So the deposition was probably the most brutal part, if I'm being honest. Where I had to sit in a go to a conference room in Los Angeles for this specific purpose. It was on like the thirtieth floor, some huge, yeah. godless, LA skyscraper. I fe- I I I walked in there and I lost the presence of God. <laughs> I was like, there's too many attorneys here. They're blocking God for my blo- life. And they they originally wanted to have a deposition for each one of us. Oh, that was so good. And thankfully, our lawyers got me <coughs> off That was the so hook. good. But poor Ethan had to take all the questions so for the both of us. So it's basically a nine-hour day of brutal... It's seven hours on the record. Yeah. But it was nine hours long of brutal, relentless interrogation that's basically designed to exhaust you, humiliate you, throw you Mm -hmm. off to make you tilt, right? So we've got, um, I go in there, and we were expecting Matt to be there too, because... And I was there too. Yeah, Hila came with me. Oh, Oh. Jesus, what was that, Dan? (laughs) This this speaker. Hopefully our... Okay, anyway. Hopefully (laughs) everyone listening just didn't get fucking their eardrums (laughs) ruptured. Um... So, yeah, we were expecting Matt to be there because he can go to the deposition by law. So Mm -hmm. I was expecting this shit-eating grin of Matt parkouring up the side of the building to come fucking stare me down the whole time, right? Watch us suffer. Yeah, he didn't 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 end up showing up. (laughs) But just sitting there with um, Uncle Fester alone, (laughs) his lawyers, that was our nickname for him, was brutal enough. Oh, my God. And it was like... Seven hours of just absolute just, torture. It's just straight questioning, no breaks, and um, like you, when they say that the the point of it is to exhaust you, so you lose track and all that. <coughs> it it's true. That really happened. Oh yeah, us. it's definitely a totally. Um, that's the technique. I mean, that's got to be a works. textbook strategy. So they sit you down, and the first five hours, they just they just ask you shit. To exhaust you and you're using all your mental capacity to answer these questions and you think you're being really slick and you're answering everything perfectly. But around five hours comes around, you don't realize how mentally exhausted mm-hmm. you can actually get Yeah. to the point where I wasn't able to actually even like compute. And there are certain times like when he had lines of questioning and I wasn't I couldn't understand what he was getting at. Like because, you know, he's trying to get to something. Right. It was all there's traps. always like a point at the end to get you. Yeah. He'll ask you like a question like hour two, like, do you think this is fair use? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. And then six hours later, he'll be like, well, if you said that was fair use, yeah. then how do you justify your answer now bearing this video clip? And you're like, oh, my God, dude. I, you know, it's stuff like that. Yeah. But actually, Ethan did really good. Thank you. <laughs> he really did. It was tough. It was tough just watching. Seriously. And <coughs> you handled it really good. So they were going to depose Ela too the next day, but our lawyer, or anyway, there was there was basically well the thing is you have to pay it's expensive it cost yeah. us the one day to depose Matt like twenty thousand dollars I'm I'm estimating but because you have one attorney there who's present taking the deposition you have one listening you have and to pay you have a court the, reporting you have all the preparation. Because they have to prepare. Yes, you. They bring you in. They coach you for the deposition, and then you you pay someone to document it. There's a transcriber there. There's somebody videotaping it. It's crazy. So it's that crazy. one day is actually probably the most heavy day of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. One of them. So I think 
you know, well, I remember his lawyer was like, am I going to get anything useful out of Ela?" And our attorneys was like, no, probably not. Really. not. Yeah. So whatever. But um, there was one highlight of that deposition, which was <laughs> like, um, he asked me, like, what did you mean by by this? And I said something like, or no. Anyway, he asked me to define what a meme is. Yeah, I think maybe what you... What was the context of how Maybe he there? asked you something, what did that mean? And you were like, oh, it was just a meme. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's and what it was. And I was like, can you define what a meme is? <laughs> and I, I said something like, I've been waiting all my life <laughs> to be asked this on the record. <laughs> how do you define what a meme is to this attorney who's trying to fuck your life up? Well, take a look in the mirror, <laughs> Uncle Fester. You ever heard of the Adams Family? <laughs> um... Uh, so, anyway, let's see. Well, what, what, it's all behind us now. But, like, the amount of paperwork, like, how many motions were there? There was, um, <clears throat> first there was the summary for judgment on the pleadings. So we got denied, right? Yeah, so you do a summary for judgment on the pleadings, and then they do a counter summary. These are all, like, 30-page documents. Yeah. And then <clears throat> you do a counter to their counter. And then they do a, or something, and then you do a counter to your counter. Seriously, every time I thought we were done, and then it's like, oh, they just replied. Yeah, that's now just you reply. need to reply to their reply. So then the judge denied our our pleadings, which was like the first attempt to get it thrown out. And frankly, I mean, she did handle the case very well. And this is another thing of like why this legal system is great and fucked up both in one. Yeah. Because she, the judges are always worried about being overturned in appeals. And so when a judge makes a ruling on pleadings, it makes it more likely that it gets overturned on appeals. Mm -hmm. And so in an effort to be as thorough as possible, which is her job, and which sadly ends up costing us like $50,000 or more, it's fucked up that you have to decide those two things. It's not necessarily anyone's fault. It's just the fact that lawyers cost so much money. So she said no to our pleadings. And Where then it, the, in the <clears throat> pleadings, I don't know if people <clears throat> know what you're talking about, but... We basically tried to end it right there, you know, mm -hmm. and say there's no doubt that this is fair use. Let just make a call now. And she denied it. Yeah. Right, basically. Right. So then we're like, okay, so now we have to go to summary uh, motion for summary judgment, which is basically the next level where you make a petition to the judge to say, with the facts presented to you now, no mm -hmm. reasonable juror would ever come to any decision except that this should be thrown out. Yeah. And then they make the opposing case. So there was, you know, we made our motion for summary judgment. They made their own motion for summary judgment. We countered each other's motions for summary judgment. Yeah. There was a reply to the counter for motion for summary judgment. There were a few replies to each other. It's crazy. And these are all 30, you know, word documents and we're so... I don't know how most people handle their lawsuits, but me and Ela were personally extremely involved for, you know, I mean, we, I didn't see any other possibility. I've learned in life <clears throat> that you can never completely trust someone else, <clears throat> even if it's a doctor or your accountant or your lawyer, you know, no one is God <laughs> right. and everyone makes mistakes. Absolutely. So you always want to kind of overlook everything. Especially as on something as important as yeah, this. Yeah, especially right? in this case. So we read every single one of those documents many times over and had like lengthy conversations with our lawyers about different ways to approach the arguments. And by the way, our lawyers are brill were brilliant. The guys at Fox Rothschild who, mm -hmm. and I want to make clear that we won because of them yeah. and not because of our previous attorneys. I don't want people, I want people to know where the credit's due on this yeah. one. It was because of our new attorneys that won this one. That's why we hired them. And so they're brilliant, but we went over everything. And it was yeah. like being having to juggle that while actually making, doing our normal thing was yeah. like having a freaking part-time job. Yeah. And even like with every motion, you think we got the motion, we're done. And then you'll get an email from the lawyer like, okay, now we need to write your declaration that goes with the motion. And that's another three-page thing that you didn't even know about. Yes. <laughs> and it's just never ending. I remember they sent me the transcript of a seven hour long deposition on the record. And they says, read over this whole <laughs> thing and mark it for um, errors. It was like 400 pages. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this is Moby Dick. <laughs> and just as boring. More boring. Anyway. So basically where we're at now is that we won. We won. 
And the way that the court works is that Matt has the option to appeal. That option is available to him. And appeal is basically if he decides to appeal, it goes to a higher court. And they have to re-argue the case based on all the evidence and the same arguments that was mm -hmm. already set forth. The good thing is that the judge made an extremely thorough mm -hmm. examination. Yeah. She made it go to summary judgment. She took her time. She made an extremely informed, polished opinion. And she let Matt do... <laughs> All he put in all his claims, whatever yes. he wanted to claim, she was like, okay, allow it. we'll allow it. It happened a couple of times where him and his lawyer wanted to amend the complaint because I mentioned, I farted his name. Or so it was like, I heard yeah. Ethan fart in the newest video. It sounded like Matt Hoss, I'm going to add the complaint. Like the video where we, the video titled, We're Still Being Sued, the one where I cry. <laughs> um, <coughs> after that video, they... Wanted to add something to the lawsuit, right? What was it? I don't remember. Something about how we're spinning a narrative of being the victim. Like something just obscenely yeah. irrelevant. <laughs> and our and our lawyers were like, most likely she's not going to allow it. But just let you know that there's a chance just yeah. that she, because she's being thorough. And she did allow it. Did and allow it made it. me nervous because our lawyers the whole time were being like, well, she's just being thorough. Mm -hmm. But I haven't heard shit from her. She's taking forever. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what's in her heart right now. Yeah. But it turned out that is what it was because her opinion was a strong, yeah. powerful rebuke of Matt. Because quintessential, my friends, <laughs> let me define quintessential, representing the most perfect <laughs> or typical example of quality or class. Um, what a great word. Oh, my God. A matter <laughs> of law. Like she brought down the gavel <laughs> on this one. <laughs> so he has the right to appeal, but his chances are looking pretty slim on that. And mm -hmm. I've always suspected that Matt was never paying for his lawsuit because, as we actually know from the deposition that's public, he is, in fact, a pizza delivery boy. He's not. There's no way that he's paying those bills, in my opinion. No. So, I mean, it's possible, but what I suspect more likely is that... Um, it's a contingency. Basically, his lawyer is like, I'll take this case on a contingency that if we actually win money, I get probably m almost all of it. Mm -hmm. And Matt's like, yeah, I just want to torture him. That's what I, you know, I'm, I'm guessing. Or Matt just wanted his pervert, perverted uh, version or of justice. That's just what people do when they don't have money to afford a lawyer. Yeah, or maybe lawyer. they split it 50-50, you, know. you know. It's a contingency. Yeah. The thing is, like, you, usually an attorney would never take a case like this on contingency. But I think because in the beginning they were trying to shake us down for $4,000. Mm -hmm. And I think t his attorney saw it as an easy, quick cash out. Yeah. An easy and then paycheck. Maybe, maybe more cash outs by going after other people. Right. That's why we initially put our foot down because yeah. I'm like, what's to stop this guy from after he shakes us down for 4000 going to everyone else who's ever made a reaction video and demanding money yeah. with us as a legal precedent? And so and then the other thing is like there's ethics to being a lawyer. So once this actually goes to to the lawsuit goes, he can't be like, well, see you, Matt. He's yeah. obligated to represent him. But now that we're at this point of appeal, I don't know if Tim is still obligated to represent him. If he doesn't have the money, if he can't find an attorney to take it on contingency, then that's it. Mm -hmm. He can choose to represent himself, which would be a fucking riot. <laughs> I can't imagine what those legal arguments will look like <laughs> written by Matt himself. <laughs> so there's that aspect. And then the other aspect is we now are at a crossroad where we can decide to countersue him for legal fees. Yeah. A lot of people think, oh, you won, so you're automatically going to get your lawyer fees <coughs> back. That's not the case. No. Unfortunately. You have to sue for that, which is basically getting involved into more... Whole new process. Whole new process. Probably months. I don't know how mm -hmm. long. A year. I think our... Our lawyers estimated it would cost between twenty and fifty thousand dollars to sue him for damages or for mm -hmm. attorney fees. Here's the thing: assuming Matt's broke, which I assume he is, so we would never actually get any money from mm -hmm. him. We would probably bankrupt him, and we would 
definite. But here's the other thing. It would set a legal precedent, a powerful one. If the judge grants us attorney fees, it is a strong, powerful deterrent to anyone else who's thinking of doing what he did. Mm -hmm. Because now you're really standing a real possibility of being liable for the cost of this shit. But I think regardless of what we're going to choose to do, we don't know yet. Yeah. Um, I think the precedent has already been made. I think. (sighs) I mean, it helps. It does add weight. It helps, but. I feel like the majority, we was did our, the, the fact we, that we won yeah. was the biggest thing. We did what we, we set out to do, mm-hmm. which is so crazy. Yeah. Um, so then, and then like basically what's pretty much par for the course is when this happens, usually the winning party will trade. So they'll say, if you don't appeal, we won't sue you. So that's the third option, which is pretty normal, as I understand it, from our attorneys. It's like the recommended way. Yeah, because it's just like, just end this shit. Just mm-hmm. end it, right? But, you know. But anyway, so that that's pretty much where we are now. So it's like, as we said, the battle is over, but the war is not over yet. But hopefully, you know, this was a huge victory. And I'm just so fucking <coughs> stoked. To actually see a legal precedent written down in the law books in favor of reaction videos. <laughs> and not even that, just internet content for com- comment and criticism. Yeah, She said that our video was like something you'd see in any video, uh, what she's, video Critic. analytics class or across the whole country. Quintessential <laughs> comment and criticism. I mean, the, the distinction she made is pretty clear in my mind because and, – and she was so good in doing this. She said, for clarity, not all reaction videos are fair use. Which we agree. We've always agreed with that. Yeah, of course. I hate these, these people yeah. who are stealing content as much as I hate the people who are removing videos erroneously and illegally, yeah. right? So she says, if you're watching a video like a viewing party, if you're just sitting there watching and not cutting it up, That's probably not fair use, Mm -hmm. but she made the special distinction for what we do, which is cutting it up, pausing it, offering comments and criticism throughout. That seems like strongly and likely to be fair use. And what I'm hoping on the result of that is that YouTube and other, you know, websites online can use this legal precedent to inform the decisions they make when they get DMCA complaints. Yeah. So next time somebody files a DMCA complaint for for reaction video, YouTube has the legal precedent to say no due to the court's prior rulings, this is fair use. Because 90% of the time, especially on YouTube, when people <clears throat> file those takedowns, it's always because they just don't like what you said about them. They don't even know about fair use or the law or anything from our experience. That's what we've always had to deal with. Yeah, exactly. And so now YouTube can step in and say, no. Here's a meme that I love for, out of this whole thing. Here's a, this is a joke. It's not actually from the depositions transcript, but somebody made a goof on you. No, it is. Wait, it is? Yeah. The witness. Yes, so I did say that. And Mr. Berker. You said, well, I'm going to like this video. That was badass, right? Yes. And then Elis said, yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Elis classic, yeah. <laughs> this is this is from the deposition. That's what we were talking about. <laughs> that's fucking, that's some good shit. That's some good <laughs> stuff. And then Elis said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have said, yeah. That's good. Um, what else we got here? <laughs> The quintessential. Oh, yeah, this was so funny. Basically, right the day our video posted, this is Google search terms for quintessential. <laughs> Look at that spike, dude. <laughs> quintessential is a meme. The judge brought that back into the lexicon. <laughs> quintessential, my friends, is on the register. So the other thing that, that like, uh, cracked me up, basically, this was all over the media, all over the news. BBC News, BBC Newsbeat. Gizmodo, Kotaku, PC Games, TechCrunch, TubeFilter, I mean, everybody's talking about this shit, right? Mm -hmm. And really nice, really supportive. But there was one that that stood out to me, and I was like, wait, what? What Mm -hmm. am I reading? (laughs) Gizmodo. Gizmodo. Look at the title of their article. Popular pickup artist, comedian, 
loses huge lawsuits against <laughs> YouTubers that mocked him. <laughs> I mean, just as titles go, I can pick apart that. Popular pickup artist comedian. It almost sounds like he's... It's like you gotta read it a few times to make sure you heard it right. Yeah, it's a real underdog story. But here, but anyway, the title... Here you go. Listen to this. Basically, they go on to talk about how great it is for fair use and stuff, but listen how they how they close this out. After basically talking about it. Now is a good time to point out that the couple behind H3H3 channel aren't necessarily angels. They racked up millions of YouTube subscribers making fun of other YouTubers and generally stirring up shit. <laughs> is this written by a 14-year-old? Or is this written by Matt Haas? <laughs> Who's the editor of Gizmodo? Is Matt Haas there? Here, listen to this shit. And in terms of subscriber base, the H3 couple certainly comes off as a big bully. Who the who writes <laughs> big bully? This is a serious website? Gizmodo? Maybe he found a new job. <laughs> Maybe it is he mad. stepped up. Gizmodo, I think they're butthurt. I think they think that we're like alt-right extremists because we made fun of Zarna. Great. Thank you. Let's see. Um, comes off, you're, We're big bullies. Uh, because we have one four point six million subscribers, while Matt only has one hundred seventy thousand. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Considering he's the one who fucking sued us. <laughs> I'm a big bully. I'm defending myself against a frivolous lawsuit. You fucking idiots. Which we won, so we're not even. That's what that's what bothers me about the title. This popular comedian pickup artist lost a huge lawsuit. Against a channel that mocked him. It ma- it points us out as like, um... I like how... We brought it on ourselves or something. When Whenever people hear about the lawsuit and then they go and watch the actual video we made about him, they're like, wow, what? you guys were so nice to him. What the fuck? Yeah, that's the initial reaction. Over oh, this, How are they going to say we were bullies? This, we're big bullies. With the wrong... With their strong following, the H3H3 couple also raised over 100000 in crowdfunding for their defense. Even big bullies enjoy the benefits of the First Amendment, though. You need to... You, <laughs> Who is giving editing jobs at Gizmodo to fucking middle schoolers? They're starting shit. They like to start shit with people. At the end of the day, you can chalk all this up to YouTube drama going IRL. What a dick. <laughs> what a trash article. Anyway. So this brings me to my next question, which I'm kind I, I don't think it would ever happen, right? But like having Matt Haas on the podcast. Would you ever want to do that? Because I, I, I think I'm pretty Ethan sh- already knows my answer. Yeah. Which is uh, never in all caps. Right. All caps. I think it would be interesting, but I'm not I don't. Sh- <laughs> I'm not sure. That, I don't think Matt would ever come on because he's too butthurt. But I think it would be interesting just to confront him. And I want to hear his his deluded excuses for why he's protecting users' rights or whatever he says. I've got a caller on the line. Let's see what they have oh, to say shit. about it. Here we go. Our first ever <laughs> call in. All right. Uh, how do I do this? He's muted. How do I do this, Dan? I can't hear you yet. I just unmuted him. He might have himself muted because he was on standby for a while. This is already a disaster. Cannot drum. <laughs> Unmute yourself. Oh, there you go. Oh, hey, 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 hey. I got you. Oh. I got you. What's up, dude? They made me do a push to talk. Hey, how are you, dude? Push to talk, so I had to change that setting. Uh, pretty good, man. So what do you think? Should Matt Haas be on the podcast? Well, okay. I was thinking about this. And then my first reaction was, like, hell no. Definitely not. But then, like, maybe, like... A year or two from now, mm. I can see maybe having him on, like after like kind of the dust has settled a little bit, maybe. Mm. I I kind of agree with that. Maybe let the, let the tension yeah. settle a little bit. Get the because I think Matt is such a hot headed, arrogant kind of guy. Like he's clearly so stubborn that he follows through to the end. Maybe he'll be a little more reasonable then. But I think I'd also rather him just disappear into obscurity by then. Yeah, that's definitely true. All I, don't, right. I don't think he'll be gaining any more subscribers after. <laughs> what? I, I, I'm always waiting for new Matt Haas content, as I said in our original video. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the call, dude. Appreciate yeah. you. God bless you. Thanks. Thanks. Cool. How'd that go? How was our first call Not bad. <laughs> that was great. Thanks, dude. <laughs> I appreciate that. Let's, do we have anyone else? Okay. 
Good job, guys. <laughs> we handled that pretty good. Thanks for the call on, Doug. <laughs> you see, we're fucking professionals here. We know we're doing. They <laughs> dab on you haters. <laughs> um, actually, interestingly, the top post on IMA, a, IAMA on Reddit right now is, believe it or not, <laughs> AMA request Matt Haas. Now that I think would be awesome. I'd love that. I, I want to hear him talk. Yeah. Just I want to hear him, you know, justify himself, which he's incapable. The only thing he's done is make a YouTube video saying like the truth <laughs> will come out. I'm high level. I'm playing 3D chess. <laughs> and so I'll talk about it once I've won this case. Because there's so much more. This video was so ridiculous that he made. I think his master plan the whole time was he was like, I'm going to make these vlogs, these videos, and collect all the hate comments to show as proof that I've been irreparably damaged. Mm -hmm. Because once that we actually were done with all the motions and stuff, he disappeared and stopped making videos. Yeah. I'd like to hear what he has to say. Either way, unbelievable. I love to see that. The fact that we're... Off. We're done with this for now Pretty much. I mean, yeah, we just have a couple little small me marinos. So anyway, <laughs> that's pretty much it for the lawsuit So thank you everyone for your support Thanks for joining us on this ride. I yeah. mean, it was an honor to be able to Lead the charge in a way on this one. I mean so Cool you guys made it possible. I mean you guys enabled us to be able to do that I don't know that we could have done it on our own. Yeah, I don't know that we could have I mean, there's no way so it was a victory for all of us. I'm just so relieved. It's been it's been crazy. Now this next story is a Juice City. <laughs> I'm telling you. It turns out you remember we were petitioning to the mayor of LA to daddy up on Jake Paul, <laughs> and it turns out he did daddy up on Jake Paul because it turns out that yesterday or was it today? I'm not sure on the day. Maybe yesterday. That. The city of L.A. made some kind of official decree that bars Jake Paul for, or anyone from Team 10 from vlogging or filming in their home. Yep. <laughs> which is the main staging point, the main setting of all their vlogs. <laughs> he has a vlogging ban and threatened with six months prison time if he films in his house. It's, it's pretty real. That is insane, dude. That is so crazy because the other part... I didn't know that, like, prison time could be on the line. Yeah, I guess it's a misdemeanor. And they've been charged with all kinds of, like, public nuisance things. So the city straight up was like, you can't film there anymore. You're making it intolerable. And the crazy thing is that because he's become so high profile, they need permits to film outside. But because of the nature of their content, they make vlogs, they film everywhere. They obviously that's just literally impossible. I think they may have to move out of LA. That's the only solution. <laughs> and it comes back, the mayor actually listened because we're like, yo, kick Jake out of LA. And he kind of is doing this by saying you can't film in your house and you need a permit to film outside. You can see here in his latest vlog when Nick Crompton, who of who who hails from the city of England. <laughs> breaks it to him live in his vlog. Watch this shit. So good. Uh, <coughs> the best friend, best friend, Chad. <laughs> Yo, what? What? Why should we go without filming? This is like legit serious. Also, hey, legendary shots. Uh, <laughs> we're not that well known. Today's the last day we're gonna film in this house. I don't know what that means, Nick. That means what it just what I just said. <laughs> why? Entire beings that apparently control us said we can't. You think I'm joking? <laughs> I am being dead. Can we can we dab on them? Wait, wait. Uh, Are you actually what do you mean? hired? What do you mean? What the, explain, what Nick. Thing? Explain. This time there's no dabbing on anyone. No, no. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you can't dab the hate out this time. <laughs> Turns out you were the ones that got dabbed on. Jack's film asked the question, what happens if the haters dab back? Right. Well, now you're getting the answer. <laughs> they dab back hard and fast and furious. Basically, after today, if we film in this house, 
you can face up to six months in prison because we need filming purpose. Actual. Because jail or prison? What's the f Street crowd. <laughs> 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 Pretty funny, but actually, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of serious, you guys. <laughs> That's your vlog. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. How are we gonna vlog not in this house though? How is that possible? We're just don't have to vlog outside. If we want to film, we need permits. How do we get a permit? Can we just do I it? Don't, no, I'm not the boss of everything, unfortunately. <laughs> so, this is gonna be pretty interesting to follow. Yeah. I mean, they are some, they are in actual deep shit here. What do you, what do you think about that? The idea of not being able to film in your own house is kind of... That's pretty wild. It seems I thought, I thought that maybe it's because they don't own the house. So I was thinking oh. if they go and buy a house, maybe then it would be fine and the and that would solve it. But Dan told us that no, that's just the law in LA. You need a permit. So But I think this was a court know. order specifically against them there. So yeah. you, you may you may actually be right in that if they just move to a more secluded place where they're not disturbing their neighbors then they may be able yeah. to film. But until then, because they're still at the Team 10 house, and when we talked to Jake, he was saying that they were having a lot of trouble finding a new place. Because everybody knows <laughs> that they're just going to trash it and burn garbage and shit. Anyway, pretty fascinating I stuff. I think they oh, may have to move out of LA, seriously. <laughs> Where are they going to go? Las Vegas? That, there's a bunch Utah. of YouTubers there. Utah. Somehow there's YouTubers in Utah. It's yeah. the home of Skippy, Mormons, huh. So There's a bunch of people we know there, yeah. Anyway, another thing that went down uh, before we get into the Skippy Ryan Johnson's conversation, the trending page. I complained about it in our last episode. And listen, I, mm. I kind of need to rally on this point because our new video has 4 million views, over 4 million views in 24 hours. It is about U.S. law. <laughs> it is about copyright issues, fair use on YouTube. Every, it, every possible person we know on the internet was talking about it. And not right? just that, but publications, online publications. And whenever you ask YouTube, how is the trending page decided? They say, it's a, an aggregate of vlog, blogs and stuff around the internet. Yeah. So this video couldn't be any more possibly trending in, in theory. And sure enough, you know, it's trending in Canada, in Australia. In Germany and Sweden, essentially our biggest markets besides the United States, the United States makes up 50% of our audience. And somehow this video is not trending in the USA. And then once we started complaining about it on Twitter, they trended the re-upload of the original reaction, but not the video about us winning the lawsuit. So fucking weird. I went on Twitter and I started bitching. And tagging Team YouTube this morning. And then when we come back from doing voiceover for Payday, then I'm getting tweets, Philly D tweets at me, and they're like, they trended your bold guy re-upload. Why that one? Why would you? Are they fucking with me? <laughs> they trended the bold guy re-upload, which is like a two-year-old video now. It's number three on trending. Even it's right got now. no context at all. It's just an old shitty video. I mean, <laughs> essentially, the audio is bad. The visual is bad. There's no context at all. Why would they trend that video and not the lawsuit one? I have no idea. And it's just it's just strange, really. It's strange. My My biggest problem with it is... And your, I mean, our biggest problem with it is how they're not transparent about what's happening there. Like, at least if it's going to be a list that is curated by, by someone, at least present it that way. Yeah, just, yeah, I agree. Totally. But even us as top creators on, on YouTube, when we ask them how it works, they won't say that. They just say vlogs, blogs, links from blogs. Just when a video goes viral on other platforms. <coughs> but like... So I was thinking like, and in this specific video when we made it, I was like, no cursing, no adult stuff, because I want to, I kind of want to see if this is going to trend. So we didn't curse in it. This is what I put on Twitter. No cursing, no adult content, relevant to U.S. law, huge victory for fair use on YouTube. And YouTube, meanwhile, is like, let's trend another Casey Neistat video. I mean, no offense to Casey. It's not his fault they yeah, keep trending it. But it's Casey. like, dude, what are you doing? It's so transparent to everybody. And in a way, it's like, I feel like Casey gets a lot of hate at a, this point for YouTube trending him so much. It's like a meme now. <laughs> it's becoming a bad look for him. 
there <laughs> literally he is on trending right now when our lawsuit video wasn't him and like an ad for tonight show <laughs> trending is essentially just i have this whole conspiracy theory like i was watching jimmy fallon last night and they had the king of random on mm-hmm. i think that they made a backroom deal where they're like we'll promote youtubers on your platform and we'll trend your tonight shows yeah and, and a way to like, like cross, cross promotion, pl- cross promote. And I, I mean, I think it's a great idea because you get more people from traditional TV and the YouTube ecosystem, which in turn helps all of us. So in theory, I think that's a great idea. But you got to balance it. They can do whatever they want. Just be transparent about it. That's my biggest grief with YouTube. Like, just be honest and I'm and fine. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Although it is a great little diss to Bull Guy that they trended that video. <laughs> I'm sure he's loving that. Dude, I was so happy with that play to re-upload it. <laughs> I remember talking to our attorney and we were talking about like theoretically if we won, we could do anything with that video. And we're like, wait, could we just re-upload it? And then he's like, yeah, of course, you won. It's your property. It's fair use by a matter of law. <laughs> and we're like, oh, my God, we have to re-upload it on H3. It's so beautiful. Ugh. All right. Um, All right. So we can. Uh, I just want to see if anyone's in the Discord room. Mm-hmm. Um, no. Okay. So we have Ryan, John Zemis, and Skippy on standby. Coming up next, we're going to hop on the phone with both of them. I'm, I'm actually really excited. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I love both these guys. Um, but first, let me let me quickly thank our sponsors before we get into that. First and foremost, we've got Quip. Okay. Do we have a Quip toothbrush? Here. I love this toothbrush. This is probably my favorite toothbrush of all time. I am I am obsessed with oral hygiene. Either will tell you that. I brush my mm-hmm. teeth like 10-minute sessions. No, no, you will brush like a whole episode of some show that's like 40 minutes long. I feel like that's—sometimes I, I feel like it's got to be bad for me because sometimes my mouth gets no, burned. No, because every time we go to the dentist, there's nothing wrong with Ethan. I mean, it's good for my teeth. <laughs> Ela's butt hurt. And Ela's I have to do— teeth. Every time there's something with me. I mean, you you does seem like you're pretty unlucky because you floss and every you brush night. every day. I mean, twice I brush at least twice a day, yeah. but I floss every night. Yeah, and every time we go to the dentist, they're like, yeah. they're like, Ethan, why do you bother coming here? Ela, you're done. Ela, we need to change all your teeth. <laughs> we need to give you ten root canals. I don't know what I don't know what it is. It's weird how some people. I guess it is something like um, some people have like deeper crevices in their teeth, shit like that. Yeah. It's harder to clean. Yeah, I do have that. So anyway, I'm always on the search for a good toothbrush because when you brush for 10 minutes, if it's not perfectly soft, that shit will destroy your mouth. And not only is this the so- one of the softest brussels I've found, it's got a great even brush and it's got this timer. You turn on the vibrating. You hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. You hear that, chat? Please, more than just your mouth. I wonder if they like that. <laughs> hey, they came back. <laughs> They're like, yeah, it's a sex toy. <laughs> it's more than a toothbrush. It's got more than one purpose. Um, you turn on the vibrating, and it basically times your brush to make sure mm-hmm. you brush enough. And it times out three minutes of brushing time. And I promise to you, when you finish with this, your mouth is going to be sparkly, squeaky clean. <laughs> so to get your quip, and if to support the show... Go right now to getquip.com slash H3, and you'll get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. That's this part here. Basically, you just change the top. That's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash H3. That's get, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash H3. Thank you so much to Quip. Next up, Audible. You guys all know and love Audible. I love Audible. Makes the most mundane tasks a joy. Mm-hmm. Audible is the largest source of online audiobooks. They've got it all, guys. It'll you know if you're exercising, if you're playing video games, you're taking a drive, you want to listen to a wonderful, enriching story. Go to Audible and see what's good. Bye. <laughs> actually, Audible surprised me with how much I actually enjoy this service um, and, and the, find it useful. The narration is always really good. <laughs> yeah. They've got some celebs. They they bring in the celebs. I haven't been invited yet. <laughs> what book would I narrate? Do you think? Some uh, weight loss. <laughs> Fupa <book>. lost. 
<laughs> That'd be my dream to narrate my own food loss book for Audible. <laughs> Guys, if you go to audible.com slash H3 podcast, you will get a free audio book with a 30 day free trial. Now, here's what I'm going to recommend you listen to. Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, book number one. The books are thick. They're dirty. I've read them all, but I've also listened to the audio book. It's a breeze. It's a joy. They've got like this atmospheric environmental voice acting. It will transport you to another world. And if, I mean, the books give you a whole new perspective on the story. Like, I love the show, but the books, you know what they say about the books. Here's something interesting, Game of Thrones fact. The show is called Game of Thrones. But the actual series, if you didn't know, is called Song of Ice and Fire. Game of Thrones is the name of the first book of the series. Oh, so the show chose to go with a different title? Right. Or that was I? just the name of the first book. Hmm. The, the series itself is actually called Song of Ice and Fire. I think Game of Thrones is better. I actually do, too. <laughs> I actually do, too. Well, Game of Thrones is a little more limited in scope. I think mm, the first book yeah. is a very Games of Thrones book. Yeah. And it's not always the Game of Thrones thing. So I understand the Song of Ice and Fire. Although it took a long fucking time to get to the Ice and Fire part. <laughs> so I get both of them. Anyway, thank you so much to Audible supporting us. If you guys want to support the show, go to audible.com slash h podcast. Get a free <laughs> audiobook with a 30-day free trial. And finally, we have Casper. The Mattress Company, <laughs> Casper. They told me to sing that. They gave me the ditty. <laughs> They're like, hit a C note, drop it down to a <laughs> D7. Uh, Casper, we got a Casper mattress. It's a, it's it's incredibly comfortable. Yeah, and I'm actually using their pillow too. The pillow is incredibly comfortable. The Casper mattress is really cool. You, they deliver it to you in a box. You bring it out. It puffs up. Because they, they really compress it down, and then mm-hmm. when you open it up, you get surprised by how much it opens up and fluffs up. And then you can't redo the way it came. What? Like, if, if you were thinking maybe if I move, I could... No, it's... Because we tried. Fluff out <laughs> once. You only fluff out once. Yeah. It's a serious fluff out. You can't defluff. <laughs> as hard as you try, you cannot defluff. Um... Their engineers are obsessive about making the most comfortable mattresses on Earth. And I'll tell you what, I compare it to sleeping on a very comfortable mattress. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what that's like? It's easy. <laughs> you don't even have to strain your imagination. Um, I think for the value, it's probably one of the best mattresses you can get if you're in the market. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. And here's the deal. Mattress comes delivered to your door in a compact box. Free shippings and returns. Available in U.S., Canada, and now in the U.K. And this is really cool. You get a 100-day trial period. Mm. Considering we spend one-third of our lives on a mattress, it's so important to try, truly sleep on a mattress before committing. That's why Casper gives you a 100 nights to try it out. Very cool. Mm-hmm. So if you head on over to casper.com slash h3, you get $50 off your first purchase of a mattress. Cool. That's casper.com slash h3 with promo code h3. Terms and conditions apply. I don't know what they are. They just told me to say that. <laughs> Dad, why are you doing that? That's weird. S- something keeps happening. I'm getting freaking I ear blasted. I have a feeling that the stream is not hearing it. Though. I hope not. I think it's just us. I really hope that someone with headphones didn't just get <laughs> deafened for life. Um... <laughs> So if you're in the market for a great new toothbrush, a great new mattress, or a wonderful, entertaining uh, audiobook, consi- oh, they do hear it. <laughs> consider supporting the show by heading on over to one of our sponsors. Thank you so much to them. Guys, I'm going to take a quick break to urinate. And when we come back, we are going to get real with your boys, Skippy. And Ryan Johnson. I am super excited, so do not go away. We'll be back after a brief, brief break. Thank you guys so much. See you soon. All right. Welcome, everybody, back to the H3 Podcast Live. <laughs> Welcome is, back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have got Skippy, the now 39-year-old virgin, on deck to receive some sage advice from the ultimate pickup master, Ryan Johnson. Um, they're both legends. Ryan is someone we've spoke about in the past. He's a soper. He's a party animal, he's a musician, and most importantly, he's a pickup artist, and right. he's fucked like 200 girls, at least. I do want to ask him, what's the current number? Now, Skippy 
was the subject of one of these shows on like TLC or one of these networks that will make a show about anything called the Virgin Diaries. Mm -hmm. And it cataloged his attempt to just get his dick wet, essentially. He's a 34-year-old Mormon. And he's never had sex. He lives with his mom in the basement. But he's this wonderful character who is just so desperate to dick, put his dick into any hole, which is admirable, something I really relate to on a personal level. I don't know if you would agree with that, <laughs> I but we I, can ask him. Yeah, and um, <laughs> anyway, he's now 39 since that came out and still a virgin. So I want to bring him on, ask him a couple questions, and then we'll get Ryan on the phone to hopefully uh, coach these two guys and, and, and ideally to build this into a more fruitful relationship between the two of them. So with that being said, I Skippy, if you're there, I have one question for you to begin. <laughs> Absolutely. Go for it. Uh, my first question for you is, like, when watching that, that episode featuring you on the Virgin Diaries, I noticed that you had sure. a mason jar full of belly button lint <laughs> next to your bed that you brought out during your date. Can you explain what the fuck is with the belly button lint collection? Okay, super quick story about that. 20 years ago when I was on my Mormon mission... Every day we were supposed to, like, write in our journals, right, and read the scriptures and things. And I was like, I don't do – I'm like, what do I do every single day? And I was like, okay, I shower. And I'm like, oh, but I also, like, uh, empty my belly button. And I'm like, okay, I can't commit to uh, writing in my journal every day, but I will do that. And so I just started pulling it out, and I – there was a little jar from uh, Christmas that I had, and so I'm like, oh, I'll just put it in there. Something so about it being it in like a Christmas that, jar makes it. No one. <laughs> just yeah. saying. Something and, like, Something about putting it in a Christmas jar. Okay. That one's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go ahead. I'm just going to stop. Clearly, there's a little bit of a delay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Between then and when uh, the show filmed me with it, like maybe 10 people on the planet knew about it. Like... My best friend since high school had no idea that I had it. Like, literally, uh, no one knew about it. They came and filmed and were like, what's that? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but you had it laying out clearly like, oh, if they were able to see it. it. Well, it was in my room, yeah. Oof. Yeah, but, like, prior to them filming it, no one knew about it. And they're like, oh, we're including that. And I get it, you know, because everything's fair game, but... It's not like I went advertising and uh, telling the world that they had to uh, film me and my amazing belly button link collection. There's something... It's not like I ever brought a girl on a date and said, hey, want to see this? Because I get that it's odd. And until the show, no one knew about it. There's something really just the fact that it's in a Christmas-styled mason jar. Because usually in a Christmas jar, you expect popcorn, caramel popcorn, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, candy canes. Yeah, instead of a really <laughs> creepy belly button link collection. Are you no, I got it. Are you still I collecting? It's not normal. I do uh, check my belly button lint every day, and if there's there, I put it uh, away just because I got in the habit of doing it. Do you ever smell yeah. it? Do you ever put your nose in there and just take a deep smell of it? It doesn't have a smell. It's lint. <laughs> it's, uh, do you smell the dryer lint and be like, hmm, it's... It, well, your yeah. belly button hole is like a fucking wet, soggy hole in your stomach with sweat and, like, lint. Well, anyway, let's get off that. How do you get so much lint in there? Oh, I get that it's odd, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. That was yeah. the part of the video that stuck out to me the most. He was <laughs> inquiring, how do you get that much lint? Well, I get lint in my belly button, too. It's something about being a fat, sweaty, hairy exactly. guy. I mean, I'm talking about myself here. I don't mean to say that about you. But with the hair, I think it's something about the hair and the sweat. Okay. on the planet that has that. No, you're not. You're maybe the only person that puts it in a jar every day, though, and collects yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Odd as crap, and if someone it's wants unique. to offer me, a, you know, many thousands of dollars, but fifty bucks, I'm not uh, selling it. But <laughs> so uh, let everyone know. Absolutely. Let everybody know now. The offer is on the table for the right offer. Skippy will sell you that jar. Is there a minimum? Oh, absolutely. What's yeah? What what absolutely. what's the minimum you're looking for? Uh, the minimum. Uh, 
probably what twenty five hundred dollars, something like that. Like if a person gave me a thousand dollars right now, only because I think that I could probably get twenty five hundred. <laughs> so like, there's a then, special yeah. there's a special promotion going now for our <laughs> listeners. Get a hold of Skippy yeah. if you want to buy his belly button lint collection. Use code H3. Yeah, yeah, use, use, use code H3. I am skipping. You got it. <laughs> All right, let's yep. get into the, um, let's get a little deeper than this, as much as I do love talking about yeah. Bellybone Lint. Um, what did you think it's when you first saw our it. video? Yeah. Oh, you know what? It was crazy because that morning I had checked my uh, Twitter and I was at like 1,200. And I had gone from uh, like when Virgin Diaries came out. My uh, phone blew up, and I went from, like, 800 Twitter followers up to, like, 1,500. And I was super excited about that. But then over the last couple of years, that 1,500 uh, dwindled down, and I built it back up to 1,200. And that was Thursday morning at, like, 10 o'clock. And then Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock my time, you guys released the video. And within an hour, I was up to uh, – because you guys then released the video and did the podcast – and mm-hmm. I was up to, from 1,200 up to, like, 1,500. And I'm now wow. up to 2,300 Twitter oh, followers. Oh, yeah, boy. And also, I had not been recognized in Utah. I I have been on a game show and won money there. I had even did an internship for a local TV station in the morning where I was on fairly regularly. And have only, in the last 10 years, been recognized three or four times, and in the last two weeks, I've been recognized <coughs> ten times. Wow, that's <laughs> cool. So you seem pretty happy about it. At Wendy's. Oh, yeah. that's cool, man. I'm happy to hear. Yeah. So you're not considering suing us, right? <laughs> not that you... No, no, okay, no, no. Good, good, I, good, good. It's <laughs> flattering that anyone cares about it, because uh, you know, just like me being on Virgin Diaries was something that was really fun, and I got to. I was supposed to be on the View, but my plane got stranded in Detroit, so I didn't get to go on the View. Well, let me I ask you. To be on Dr. Drew uh, to promote it, and then I got to fly up to Seattle and introduce the Lumineers on stage in front of the Dexter Hall Ball from all of that. It's a, it sounds like you have a very Virgin illustrious Diaries. history. <laughs> I want to ask you something. Um, have you yeah. been on any dates lately? Uh, my most recent uh, date was a week ago. I nice. uh, took a date to uh, see Jimmy Pardo at Wise Guys in Salt Lake uh, Comedy. How did and it go? Tonight, it, it went really well. It's a girl that uh, I've known uh, off and on for like seven, eight years. And so uh, we go on dates and I, I've told her a million times, like, uh, if she's ever interested in a relationship, I'm there for her kind of thing. So is, but, she, uh, is she a Mormon? Yeah, she's also Mormon. So, I, as I understand mm-hmm. it, but your I, biggest you're you're, you're, you're forty. Yeah. You're coming up on forty years of not never mm-hmm. having had sex. Is the biggest mm-hmm. obstacle in your way the fact that you can't have sex till you're married because you're a religious Mormon, or at this point, are you just ready to get your dick wet? No, I want to wait until uh, I want to wait and have uh, sex until after I get married, mm-hmm. and hopefully, it's with a girl that uh, shares all of my sex. Uh, same views, but at the same time, I don't think the same now what is as I it? did when I was 22. Like, I'm pro-medical marijuana, pro-gay marriage, so I'm not like, uh, like, I'm a liberal Mormon, right. and so thinking what is it that, that uh, I'm going to marry a virgin, like, when I was 22, yeah, I thought I was going to get married to a virgin. When I'm 39, do I think I'm going to get, so no, I'm wanting you to wanna marry a virgin. I get married to Your dream is to marry no, a virgin. I, I, Tell me, once once you get when married, I, when what, I was 22, when, once you get when married, what, it was my dream. Once you get married, what is the first sexual act that you that you would like to perform? Sex in the limo on the way over to the hotel. Sex in the oh, limo on the yeah. way to the hotel. You can't wait. You get it out. You get it down. You know what to do. Like, you know where the hole is, right? Uh, yeah, I'm very aware. That, it's surprising because uh, it's always... You know, men have Audis and girls have innies and how that works. Just, yeah. It's always surprising because yeah. it's a little lower than you expect. I hear that frequently that it's like it's lower than you expect. Um, <laughs> well, and then when, and that'll be great. So you're going to do it really quick in the limo, and then when you get to the hotel room, what happens then? Do you really um, want to know? Like, do you want to know the songs that I have picked out that I want to No, no, like, what positions? Like, what positions? 
Uh, my prediction of what sex will be like with my wife in a hotel room. Uh, well, it kind of depends on her because I'm not going to rape my wife. And so uh, I'll kind of just go with the flow with whatever she. So you're not you're not going to take the lead on this one. You're going to be more submissive. You're more you're into being submissive. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that when that time comes, I'll like really go with the moment. I don't nice. think that having a plan of like, okay, so sweetie, I've been <laughs> this. Uh, I all I know is the song that I want to do it to, and it's uh, Celine Dion's "All Coming Back to Me Now." Uh, and just when I was seventeen, I thought that that was the song that I should lose my virginity to, and so it's just been my go-to answer. Celine Dion, let her take, let her take you there. I'm curious, what's the yeah. furthest you've ever gotten with a girl so far? Second and a half base. Second and a half base. Is that above or yeah, below clothing? B- above so or below? It was, so it was. Uh, it was uh, both experiencing um, above stuff, right? Uh, it's never been. I've never. Uh, a girl's never gone below the waist with her mouth with me, right? But with hand. And then, so you're uh, allowed. You're, are you allowed to get a blowjob? <laughs> this is way too no, detailed no, like for as me. A, as a Mormon, as a Mormon, <laughs> if I were to do that, that would be like a talk with your bishop uh, kind of stuff. Talk so, to, but like, uh, okay, ta- no ta- talk. Talk to, to the, the bishop. bishop. <laughs> I love that phrase. But so, I mean, yeah. what, is it willing for you to get your like get a blowjob and then just be like, well, this is worth a discussion with my bishop? <laughs> Oh, don't get me don't get me wrong. I mean, like there have been times where I've gone on a date thinking that I was just going to kiss her, and then all of a sudden my body took over, and the next thing you know, I'm like, uh, you know, like hands are moving in a car, and then it's like, oh crap, I need to talk to, uh, to my bishop about this later, right? When the whole intention was just like, wouldn't it be great if I got a kiss at the end of the date? Yeah. So you and, can. Like, I've had chances where I could have had sex with a girl, like where I've been on dates with girls. And I know if I had wanted it to get to that point, but I really did turn into Steve Carell on the 40 year old virgin. And the next thing you know, like you've accidentally kicked a girl in the face. And uh, <laughs> it really, the whole, and, the whole religion you know, thing, have, it seems like so rough, man. It's such a rough, rough thing to deal with in terms of sex. But I'm, I'm hoping that with the advice of a dating expert like Ryan Johnson can help bring yeah. your game to the next level so that we can find mm-hmm. you the girl of your dreams and so that you can finally move on to that third, fourth, and dare I say fifth, a.k.a. <laughs> home run, Grand Slam. <laughs> we want to take you all the way well, with, I, with Ryan's help. And do you, where I see, do you where think I see you would benefit from the, from the dating, I'm, from the advice of a dating coach? Yeah, no, where, where I see the most value of being is like, if I ever want to get to the point where a girl would actually want to marry me, I have to be better with girls to just, like, get them to go on, like, first, second, and then third dates. Because, like, I've been on a ton of first dates, right? And I've made out with 49 girls. Whoa. Have, Hello. Had, <laughs> how, many, how many girls have I had, like, fourth dates with, right? Like, so I've been mm. on... That's the problem is getting that fourth date. <laughs> oh, shit. I did add to call, but it hung up on Skippy. Oh. Hold on, I'm trying to get them both on a call. Oh, fuck. All right, hold on, I'm trying to get them in a group call. Add call. What am I doing wrong? You call Skippy, and then you go, Hey, Skippy, I'm trying to add Ryan to the call. Hold on one sec. Okay, okay. So we're getting Ryan on the phone. Our Discord completely failed. How do I, because when I call him, it just hangs up on Skippy. I don't get that. You can cut this part, uh, Dan. Oh, here you go. Merge. Okay, good. Mm. <laughs> uh, hello. Is everybody there? Hello? Here. Ryan, are you there? I am here. All oh. right. <laughs> Thank you guys for your patience in trying to get this set up. It's our first time doing something like this in our... Our basic, our our planned method completely failed. So yeah. we're on the phone here with Ryan Johnsmith, the dating expert, with Skippy, the thirty nine year old virgin. Ryan, um, Ryan is a is a god. I mean, <laughs> Ryan, how many women have you slept with? 
Uh, to date, 219. Oh, Whoa! my God. <laughs> Did, you hear, Did you hear the fan? Like, cause I'm, I'm in hot-ass Las Vegas over here. Nope, you're good. You're good. Seven degree. It was warm. It was raining earlier, but um, you, you can't hear the fan. Nope, no, you're all good. So my Hello, question, good? my question for you, Ryan, is how does your dick stay on? <laughs> How's your dick not just withered and falling off your body after after? <laughs> that's like you're throwing your the dice on the craps table two hundred and seven <laughs> times or whatever. Well, I I definitely <laughs> recommend practicing safe sex at first. When at you're, first, when you're with a new partner, right. And then, I mean, ultimately, uh, when you move into a, let's say, a, a, a trusting, monogamous relationship. Got it. That's good wanna, advice. You know. So, Ryan, let me introduce you to Skippy, who's also on the phone. Um, Ryan, what basically, right. what, yeah, let, why, why don't you guys, why don't you pick it up, Ryan, and talk to Skippy? Question, question number one for me is, of those 219, how many uh, did you end up in a relationship with? Mm. Um... Quite a few, actually. I mean, living in Las Vegas, it's it's an interesting game out here. And um, mm-hmm. you know, as a as a single guy, it's it's, it's uh, I enjoy sex with beautiful women, and it's fun to sure. go out and meet women. And uh, well, let's and let's focus on helping and, Skippy out here. I mean, here. <laughs> Skippy <laughs> is uh, Skippy is basically having trouble getting to the fourth date. He has a lot yeah. of dates. He finds a lot of dates, but he has trouble securing mm-hmm. the relationship, right? So what kind of advice would you give somebody like Skippy? Like, talk to Skippy. Like, like, tell him what does he need to do to get that fourth date? Well, I have a few thoughts. Sure. Well, let's start with um, what's what's going on. Like, for, for if I was dealing with a dating coaching client, first I would want to find out what are the underlying issues of I'm, I'm going to ask you personally, why do you think that you're not being able to be successful with women? I think the number one thing is that I uh, I feel like a failure in my life, that I'm 39, uh, jobless, and in mom's basement. So I think that that's like a, I think that that's the thing. Like when I was in my 20s and I wasn't like, uh, caring about uh, my future because, like, everyone in their uh, young 20s is expected to be like this. And it was like, yeah, go on tons of first dates all the time, uh, that kind of thing. But I know that the reason why it, uh, in my 30s it's different is because, like, even if I had to have the right first pickup line for a girl, there's that thought that goes, oh, well, this went really well. Um, and I even wanted to say like, Hey, let's get out here and go make out someplace. My back home situation is mom's basement. You know? So. But yeah, okay, but, but, now here's the thing. Like I, I saw the video mm-hmm. and you made that video six years ago, right? Yeah. Five years ago. Yep. And you're still in the same place. Yeah, because I'm pathetic. It's true. I uh, I feel like you're accepting a way too life. easy, Skippy, that you're like, yeah, I'm pathetic. That's it. It's like, you got to get out there and shake your dick. Bye. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, like the I, first thing that you're saying right there, like, that's like the first thing off the top of your head. Like, I'm pathetic. It's like accepting the this underlying belief that that's where you're at and you're at that plateau. And <laughs> right. If you think about that, don't get me wrong. I'm trying to. I don't. I'm not happy with this. In fact, I, uh, my mom and I even made an agreement that I have to find a place to live by the end of September. So, like, I'm forcing myself to move on. And I've like uh, gone and gotten the help uh, with getting my resume updated and things to be able to get a better job. And I realized that that is a part of it, right? But that also isn't like the reason why on Tinder I'm not getting girls. So I think that that's one of the things that have brought you into I'd love to see with, Tinder uh, profile. like, mm-hmm. you know, picking up the girls so that like, okay, that stuff can happen another day. Let's change that first. Well, okay. Skippy, do you I'm feel comfortable with your approach? The beginning. Do you feel comfortable approaching women? Do you think you have a good approach? In my 20s, yes. In my late 30s, no. So what are we going to do about that, Ryan? Give this guy some slick tips on how to fucking get his dick wet. Well, the problem here, Ethan, <laughs> is that, well, think about his in game. Even if he goes up and, and he's approaching 
girls and doing well, he has no way to seal the deal. Or right. the, I, I'm, I'm understanding that you're Mormon and you're not trying to like quote unquote seal the deal until you're married. Um, <laughs> but you still have no way to isolate the girl. And is that, is that what you're saying, right? Until you yeah. move out of your mom's place and you have your own place. Yeah, that seems about. Yeah, right. or, yeah like, this well, isn't, this like isn't just about approaching women. You've got to yeah. you have to look at the the bigger picture, so to speak. Sure. You, you know, you got to. You have, you have to figure out how you're going to get from, from point A to point B. And whether that's sure. whether you're not trying to actually have sex with the girl and you want to end up or this, this, like a, <laughs> this whole issue is kind of, kind of screwed up. Because a, a woman does want a man who's going to fuck her. Like not, you know, okay, but we, we'll, we'll try to work. No, well, that's interesting. Now, let's follow that thought. Because Skippy, I was asking about what he fantasized his first you know, sexual position would be on his future wife. And he said, like, he's not trying to rape his girl and he's just going with the flow. So I'm getting some, like, very um, submissive vibes from Skippy. Yeah, just because I don't have a history of, like, knowing what the first thing to do, even if I got to that point, was kind of thing, you know? I'm good at head massages. I can usually get a girl to, like, let me make out with her if I give her a good head is massage. That, is that enough, like Ryan? That. That's in my uh, that's in my arsenal. Of so he's good at good foot at massaging. Ryan, is that enough? Yeah, I don't think that's going to be enough. <laughs> We're going to have to step up your game, Skippy. <laughs> look, look, yeah, you've been doing I the same thing right now that. since you made this this video like six years ago. <laughs> I, I want to ask you a question. If you continue this pattern that you're on and you keep doing the same things that you've been doing the past six years and you keep doing yeah. this the rest of your life, what kind yeah. of results do you think that you're going to end up with? What, what do you think is going to be the outcome? Like no, five years. See, I, I completely agree with you. I think that you're right. Like I need to make like I need a uh, head to toe makeover. Mm. Of, like, oh. my Let's get Skippy a makeover. Dating. Wait, are you talking you know, mental like, or physical, my... Skippy? Well, I'm talking about both. Right? I want to. I want to give your ass a makeover. <laughs> I want Ryan to give you a makeover. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and if we can oh, like talk a, about it, like a plan. oh, I love it. And, and, and we can all go we get uh, Manny Pennies or something like that. Get Manny Pennies and, and Ryan. Got to the mall. I'm gonna need you to put him in the well, chokers and shit and capes. <laughs> well, and uh, so guys, here's the little asterisk to the whole thing. Like with me, where other guys, their thought is like, okay, the end game is to have sex, right? If we adjust the bar and say, like, okay. If he's waiting till he gets married to have sex, but if we put the goal at not just like getting Skippy to the point where he can have sex, but getting Skippy to the point where he can end a first date and get a second date for sure, or even have the goal be to get Skippy to go on a date where he can get a makeout at the end of the first date and then get a second date to go with it, that's a much better goal for me than go have sex kind of thing, you know? And so like for other guys, yeah, their whole goal is Go out, get late. Ryan, let me let me ask you to step in here. Um, Yeah, Ryan, what? Give me a give me you as your dating expert, a pickup artist, a motivational coach. Let's lay out a plan, a a a playbook for Skippy. Yes, yes. Well, first of all, we've we've got to change like the way that he's thinking about this. First of all, like when you're when you're saying like this is a a goal to like get a makeout. Like it's not hard to make out with a girl. (laughs) Like girls like to be kissed just as much as guys like to kiss girls, and you're making it. You're, you've got to take the pussy off the pedestal, bro. Like you have it built <laughs> yeah. up in your mind, like it's this great thing, and it, and it's so out of reach. But you have to understand, like you're a man, and it's built in you to take what you want Damn. to be a dominant, real man. <laughs> oh and shit! Man. Go, I'm getting man. wet. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Ryan. <laughs> Oh, what happened? Oh, shit. Are you kidding me? Are you guys there? Okay, you're there. You're there. Go ahead, Ryan. I got you back. (laughs) Wait, are you there, Skippy? I'm here. Oh, what happened to Ryan? Oh, you are there. Okay, so go ahead. You were were, were, like dead for a second. Yeah, Um, I left off at take what you are because you're a real man. And and so I was (laughs) kind of, I was was feeling that. So continue (laughs) on that thread. Well, I I don't know, whatever. But look. I mean, you've been doing this, well, not just the six years, but you've been doing this like almost 40 years now. Like if you, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to continue to keep getting the results that you've always got. 
Does that make sense? Sure. Yep, absolutely. So we need to change these beha- these patterns of behavior that you have. Right. Like we need to agree. Uh, imagine, imagine like your mind is like a a computer. Like a and right now you have an a, like you're not even like Windows Seven. You're like a like Windows ninety eight. We need we need to uh, oh, we shit. need to like basically <laughs> wipe out that old hard drive and reinstall. I know Ethan hates Windows, but I'm just. Using this, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we need to upgrade you to to the Windows 10. Just as long so as you need, mute the notifications. Skippy 2.0. We need to. We need I to see step the up your game. Hard dick, hard drive. I see what you're going for. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Keep yeah. C- continue, Ryan. No, no, no one thought that was funny. I thought it was hilarious. So, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to. <sighs> You know, it, it, we're gonna have to get together and, and brainstorm on this because I you need a you need a <laughs> yeah, hardcore. Yeah, they need to get together. You know, well, what do we do? Well, what do you think? We're gonna give him a, a makeover, head to toe. I think he. I think he needs a a, a definite makeover. I mean, we need to. We He's got to look to, good to, to feel good. The hair. We need to shave the neck beard. We need to get rid of the goofy shirts. Okay. We need to, now, I what, like would, what, do you, what are we going to do about the belly button link collection? Should he bring that, or, or what do we do about that? <laughs> well, we need to take that to, like, uh, a Chevron station, pour gas on it, and just fucking light on fire. It's Skippy, I hate <laughs> to, I hate, <laughs> Skippy, hold on, hold on, Skippy, I know, I know, I know, Skippy, hold on, hold on, let me talk here. I know that you don't bring it on dates, but the mere existence of it is a fucking huge deterrent. <laughs> Like, I try to sell it. I'll give you a week to sell that, Skippy, if there's someone out there who's weird enough to want to own that. But I'm telling you, if we're, I mean, I just don't think that that is something you can carry around. Because when you're in an intimate conversation, you need to share the fact that you have a belly button link collection next to your bed. Why don't we put it on eBay? And, and make, put make it on eBay. It, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do that. I'll autograph it, Skippy. But if nobody buys it, you got to get rid of it because that's just a skeleton in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you bring me out there and we meet, I'll bring it with completely ready. You sell it, whatever you get, the highest bid. And I, and if we can put a minimum bid on it, right, so that I can. I think you may be overvaluing this. Uh, could be. <laughs> Then we'll I think if somebody, I think if somebody future. takes it for free, you're getting a good value. <laughs> uh, no, it's got some it's value. Got too much sentimental value for free. Okay, so we're gonna sell it. Value. You have you have one week to sell it, or we're gonna we're gonna do what Ryan suggested and bring <laughs> and bring it to Chevron. I, I have an issue right here. I'm actually looking through your Instagram right now, Skippy. You have a picture on here um, with a uh, with um, a. a a, uh, I don't know what, it's like a beaker full of kidney stones that you're displaying. Like, no! Can, can, can you elaborate what? on that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I had uh, seven kidney stone surgeries in the last year. And what? I had a kidney stone surgery about the size of uh, your thumb that was, uh, uh, that when oh they went God. in and blew up, they pulled that out of me. And uh, the doctor said, this is that stone that we worked on. And But uh, hold on. So, so, yeah. They, are you saving them? Well, Huh? You're saving the stones, though? I kept it because uh, it was the thing that had caused me pain for all that time, so I have it somewhere, but it's not like it's uh, displayed. Do you guys not have memories of things that happened to you as a kid? Like, I'm not going you to like pictures. I have pictures. No, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm questioning just because I, I understand that it, it must have brought you immense pain. I, I, I can understand yeah. that, but yeah. if you're trying to attract women, like, having stuff like that... In the face, don't you feel that they're gonna kind of feel something cringe in the pit of their stomach, where it makes them off? And I think off? you're focusing. I think you're focusing on the wrong thing because I can't get a girl to come back with me to my place. Like, there's a way they're gonna see the. Well, I think I think that or anything like that. Uh, I can't get them to. Well, you know, like, Skippy, we're talking about well, we're talking about Skippy yeah. 2.0, right? I think the same part of you that has this desire to collect belly button lint and kidney stones is the same part of you maybe that's making it difficult. It's, it's, it's like it's it's like the I think this is the little boy inside of you talking and we want to sure. we want to see the grown man skip you the new version sure. of you. Right. Sure. And I'm open to it. I'm open to it. Let's okay, so it. let's 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 That's focus right. this then. It's, it's so, okay to to let some of these parts of you go. And I, 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 I'm, all all jokes aside, like you're in a safe place. You know, 
Uh, um, sure. We, we want the oh, best No, this you. is just to help me. This is just to help me. It's going to be a good thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, my end goal is to just, you know, you know, let's put, let's, let's get that dick wet. get his dick wet, yeah, right? let's just get the dick. <laughs> so here's what I'm proposing. In the coming weeks, I want to bring both of you guys out here to L.A. I want to bring Ryan Jones, Miss, and Skippy, the 39-year-old virgin, out. I th- propose that me and Ryan do give you a look, uh, a uh, makeover, okay? We're going to do What's some— pretty woman me. Yeah, I'm going to pretty woman the hell out of you. <laughs> okay, bring yeah, bring that? the kidney stones and the and the belly button lint with you because we need to <laughs> we need to figure out what to do with that stuff, okay? And we're basically going to coach you mentally, physically. It's going to be like dating boot camp. And ultimately, what I'd like to do because Ryan specializes in infield training. So I want to put you in the field with Ryan and basically put an earpiece in your ear and I want Ryan to be giving you real-time advice on how to be securing these relationships. Does that sound like oh, something? Absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm going to stop you right there. I, I don't, I, when, when we were doing that, it was kind of like a joke, but I, I, I usually do not take a, a, a student who has not trained with me like one-on-one in, in a classroom environment and just put the earpiece into them and take them out. It's, it's, it's more like a, after like maybe three or four or five sessions, I do the earpiece thing. Right. He doesn't really need that. But I, I think right now we need to give him a makeover and then he needs to start learning how to approach women like a confident man and be able to express what he wants. You know, Skippy, I want you to be able to – I want you to be able to be comfortable with with uh, your desires as a man. Mm. I want you to be able to – Do you know – well, Ryan, you know when he seducing thinks – women and being able to go up to them and tell them exactly what you want. You know, I, I want you to be able to like, ultimately, like, hi, so you're confident. Confident. You can, let's get out of here and do stuff that will almost make it so that I have to talk to my bishop. Almost. No. Boom. Let's go. Let's talk yeah, to I the bishop. I want to use that line, no, but. Uh, no, okay. let's, let's <laughs> all right, all right. I think, <laughs> I think we're all the, okay, on the I, same page. Yeah. Imagine someone like, like, uh, I don't know, someone famous like George Clooney or something like that. Would he use a yeah. line like that? Not talk to the bishop. No. But he would. No, 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 no. What do you? No, no, ima- I don't what? want you to seem try hard. I want you to be able to just walk up to a woman and be like, "Hey, you know, I saw you from from across the way. I just thought you were super cute, and I want to come meet you. I'm Skippy. You know, uh, uh, who are you? Yeah, maybe Sk- is yourself. Skippy your real name? I want by you the to way, be so comfortable that, that you could walk up to a girl and and basically. Well, we'll, we'll get into it when you get there. All right. Yeah, so anyway, that this that is the way. plan, and I and and also the earpiece part. We're going to do that too. <laughs> sure. Okay. Sure. Um, okay. It'll just look like I'm on my cell phone. It'll just look like I've got my. No, it's uh, a, it's invisible. It's invisible. Yeah. Bluetooth. Yeah. Whatever. And then, fi- Whatever. and then I have one more question for you, uh, Skippy. If I bring yeah. in a pastor, certified to marriage, and I find a bunch of beautiful women, and you get to choose the one that you love, you go on a date. She's great. Would you be willing to come in here and get married to somebody? No, like, like this is all fun and everything like that. But my, uh, my long-term happiness and the internet are probably not going to be the way that I find uh, what I want. <laughs> well, I'm just spend, thinking, like, like we could just take a shortcut. We have, like, we, we could take a shortcut. Like, like you, wanna, you bring in a couple I don't cuties. Want to have a pretend marriage so that I can have sex. Okay, so like, it's not worth it to bring in a couple I cuties know. to seal it up, have someone get married. You know, get the dick wet, talk to the bishop, and then. No, because that's a, that's not the goal. The, like the goal is uh, the goal is love and marriage. But don't get me wrong, I'm a guy, and I when I go on dates with two girls, I really hope it ends with like making out, and that that girl wants to do that again. And I realize that one day that leads to the point there's, where then a person. There's another issue. Here. So See, that's yeah. That's another. That's another thing. You're you're, you're looking at this in a very. A, a, a way that's very Hollywood and it's not um, <laughs> practical in a real life application. In, in, in a real life situation, when you're meeting a woman, the it's a phone call. getting some live me shit. Um, usually, if if a seduction uh, goes properly, you should be making out with the girl with, within the first five minutes to a half an hour, not at the end of the day. Oh crap. <laughs> You don't want to make this a big deal to have that big, oh, uncomfortable crap. moment at the end of the night. What, why are you, you're, 
You're saying bull crap, but um, prove me wrong. Well, why do you Seinfeld? You don't end up with a different girl every single week. Why don't week. we let them? It's not a take this... Seinfeld episode of like, hey, this week I'm with this girl, and then the next week, you know, Carrie Hatcher is there, and then maybe the it could be though, you know, Skippy. Uh, maybe it could be. <laughs> okay, look, every passionate <laughs> relationship that I've ever been in, do you know, do you know how it started? Uh, passionately. Ooh. With you need to be a man out. who's going to sweep women off their feet. Sure. You've got to be the man, Skippy. All right, okay. guys. Let me let me cut you off boy. there. Not, I think not, I think not, we're not at a good place. Make the big, big move at the end of the day. I think we we're at a good place. Have a smooth transition. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be smooth. Sure. It's going to be slick. So I'm looking forward to arranging you guys both to come out here. And Skippy, we are going to transform you. We are going to build you, make you better, stronger, and ultimately, you're going to be talking to the pastor. Whole new me, or the bishop. I mean, you'll be talking to the bishop yeah. after our trip. <laughs> yep, that's my goal. Awesome. All right, guys. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to Ryan Johnson. Ryan, do you want to? Yeah. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me very easily. Go to my YouTube. Ryan uh, Johnson. Look up my name, Ryan Johnson, and. Uh, Stop by and say what's up. And Skippy, where can people find you at? Uh, I'm going to be starting a daily vlog because I've had a lot of people that are have said to me, Skippy, we want to hear from you. So I'm going nice. to do a vlog. And uh, where can they find that? Twitter on Twitter at, at I am Skippy, uh, and I've got uh, my current YouTube channel is I am Skippy. Uh, but yeah, Instagram I am Skippy, Twitter right. I am Skippy, right. and uh, <laughs> YouTube. Be the virgin, so, uh, <laughs> Yo, what's going to happen when you actually, t- you know, you're going to have to change the name of your YouTube channel, hopefully, by the end of this next couple weekends. <laughs> All right, guys. And I thought about, the, I thought about it. I'm going to put the word former in front of it. So okay, <laughs> good. Former. I'm glad you've thought about it. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, guys, yeah. thank you so much. You go, I'm going to, okay. Thank you, guys. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm going to get in touch with you guys over the next couple of weeks. And thank you all, both of you guys, so much for coming and joining us. It was a lot of fun. I appreciate you both. This was fun, guys. Thank you so much. I'm so flattered that you guys even did a video about me. It's so (laughs) It's been awesome. Thank you. Thanks, dude. Thank you, Ryan. Cool. All right. I think they have a lot to talk about. Yeah, they have a lot to talk about. (laughs) <laughs> I think we need to get those guys in a room together. Yeah. A glass of of uh, Henny. <laughs> I wonder if Skippy can drink Henny. Mm. It's challenging because Skippy's got this religious aspect to it. Yeah. You know. But at the end, he's just looking to find the one, which is what a lot of people are. Yeah, but also at the same for. time. I think that if it seems like talking to the bishop's a good trade. It's like you fuck up. <laughs> you talk to the bishop. It's I like washing your hands. It. You get your hands dirty. You wash them. You're good. You talk I to the bishop. I think it's more complicated than you that. So? You only get three talk to the bishops in a lifetime before God hits you with a lightning bolt. All right. Well, that was fucking interesting. Look, we're out here. We're trying new things. Give us a break. Uh, these guys are both interesting. I'm, I'm going to see what kind of names we can cook up. I think it was interesting. Up. Yeah, it was interesting to hear them. I mean, hey. So, thank you, everybody, for watching this week, uh, the H3 Podcast. <laughs> um, stay tuned. Next week, we have somebody scheduled. Who do we have scheduled? Is it Jenna and Julian? I think so. I think it is. Jenna Marbles and Julian. We do need to Solomon. confirm with them that it's the final day. I think it's the first, so that is going to be exciting. That would be the Friday show. I wish you guys an awesome, excellent weekend. I'm excited for my weekend. We're going to celebrate... Yep. We're going to Las Vegas with our friend Post Malone. My best friend. Everybody's giving me shit for that. He's I said he's one of my best friends. It doesn't matter. He's one of my best friends. He's a close <laughs> friend of mine. He's a friend, okay? I'll tone it down. A guy I know. We're going to Vegas with him. We're gonna watch the fight. We're gonna play blackjack. We're gonna drink some beer. I'm very excited. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for sharing your Friday with us. Or it's Thursday, actually, not Friday. Um, Yo, appreciate y'all. And uh, have a... Oh, should we take a call? I think I already wrapped it up. Yeah. We only end up ever taking one call. On Tuesday, we'll be taking more calls. Wait. Okay, yeah. We don't have... We don't have anybody in standby. Okay, well, hey, we took one call. It was great. So that's a fun thing. Guys... 
See you next time. Ta-ta.